Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer and with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. Thank you so much for watching my video blog. Today I'm here with Greg Cash from Greg Cash Tax Plus. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what are some of the most common missed tax deductions that people miss out on ultimately when they're looking at either buying or selling a home. So, Greg, thanks for coming out today. You're very welcome. What are some of the things that people miss most commonly when they're actually buying a home? Those write-offs that they can take that maybe they don't think about. Well, one of the things that they can take is, are the home, uh, the loan origination fees, which are commonly missed because they're people think of them as part of the closing costs, but they're but they're actually. You know, they're actually deductible if, as long as they're not wrapped into your mortgage itself. If they're wrapped into your overall mortgage, then no, it's all part of the amortization on your uh, mortgage payments. But if they are paid separately and itemized separately, then that, you can definitely take those on, on your tax returns. There are other little items that uh, people can, can take as well, particularly in the purchase of the home, and that is... Um, the prorated uh, interest that might be included on the uh, HUD form and or the, proper, uh, the property taxes, which are also allocated between the, the time of purchase and the time of payment. So you say a, a, a seller may have actually sold their, their property, have already have paid the property taxes, and then they go back and, and uh, some of that gets included on the HUD statement as part of what you had to pay them back. So you get to take that as a deduction on top of the property taxes that you would ordinarily take as a result of the purchase of the home. Great. That's exciting. So, and as a course of one of our services that we provide is we do send out those closing statements to you at the end of the year, because I know moving, you lose a lot of papers. <laughs> so we do send those out. So you should be looking for those. If you haven't gotten one already from us and you bought a home this last year, let us know. And um, now what about selling? When you're selling a home, I know there's a lot of costs associated with selling a home. What there is deductible? Yeah, with selling a home, <clears throat> any costs that you incur in Preparing the property for sale, like oftentimes people will go in and they will paint or they will do some repairs, and sometimes those can get rather costly, but if it's for the purpose of actually selling your home, it's deductible. It, it helps reduce your gain, and as we all know that if it's your personal residence, for a single person, you still get that Section 121 exclusion of up to 250000 married couples of 500000 So. When you're looking at including those costs in the sale of your home, also look at whether or not it's really going to impact you as far as being able to take that, that uh, exclusion from your uh, capital gain income. Great. So can they, now is that separate? If they can, let's say it's a single person and they are selling their house and they're fixing it up and they want to lower their gain, um, they can take 250000 plus repairs or just the 250000 Well, the 250000 is actually... Uh, what is automatically excluded. So you so you look at your capital gain anyway. If your capital gain exceeds the $250,000 for a single individual, then you definitely want to make sure that you capture all of those additional costs that are incurred with the selling of the property. And as we all know, sellers also are typically responsible for the payment of the commission. So that's usually a very large amount of money that they end up having to uh, or being able to deduct uh, as part of the cost of sale. So they essentially get a, a significant amount of deduction for selling the property. Absolutely. Terrific. Now I know you mentioned too that two hundred and fifty thousand and five hundred thousand for a yes. married couple. You know, I get asked all the time, is there a time limit in which people need to reinvest their money from one primary residence to another? No, no longer does that exist. Back in nineteen ninety eight all the rules changed. And they actually changed for the better because people weren't accurately accounting for the actual basis of their homes when they're calculating their capital gains. And it used to be that you always bought up so you could avoid any current year gains. 
Now gains are recognized in the year of sale for all property. So it doesn't matter anymore. You don't have to worry about purchasing up or purchasing down. It's all going to be based upon your purchase price plus adjustments, which would be improvements to the home. And the difference between that basis and what you're, what you're selling for is what's going to determine what the actual gain is. So the investment issue sort of fell off the table after 1997. Perfect. Well, and obviously, it's a whole different ball of wax for investment properties. And oh, yes, absolutely. That's a whole other video. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, if you have any other questions about this or any other tax-related questions, you can reach Greg. Yeah, you can reach me at 562-597-4300, uh, or you can even call my, uh, my associate, Matt Coulomb, and he's at 562-597-4600. So either one of us can help you. We're both enrolled agents. <laughs> Perfect. And of course, if you have any other real estate related questions, you can reach out to me at 562-316-2915 or email me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. Feel free to forward and share this with your friends and click on any of the links below if you want to find out what's happening in the market, what your home is worth, and any other home values in the area. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.